This is the Cool Photo Tools Podcast, episode number 77, July 25th, 2016. Are you sick of trying to learn all the new photo software? Are you tired of hearing about the next big thing in photography? Well, neither are we. Welcome to Cool Photo Tools with Jay Beerstorff and Rhonda Spencer. Today's program is brought to you by Skillshare. For a limited time, get three months of Skillshare Premium for just 99 cents. Anyone can take an online class, watch video lessons, and create projects. Over 4,000 premium classes. Go to coolphototools.com slash Skillshare for your discount code. That's coolphototools.com slash Skillshare. Good morning, cool heads. Welcome to another episode of Cool Photo Tools. My name is Jay Pierstorf, and behind me is uh, my co-host, Rhonda Spencer, back there. Good morning. Sitting all the way in the back. All the way in the back of the bus. Back of the studio, anyway. <laughs> yep. So, good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. Another, another way too early Monday morning. Yeah, why do we do this so early on Monday mornings? Well, because I'm completely out of gas after lunch. I'm, I'm down for a nap, and then it's time for dinner and go to bed. So, you know, it's got to <laughs> okay. be morning or it's not going to happen. All right. I'm guessing. I don't know. Seems like the right, the right time to do it. All right. So, a bunch of interesting stuff has come along here. Yeah. And the thing that, uh, that got my attention today, mm-hmm. and this is not, this something that isn't actually new, so, but this might be new, um, you know, if you're a newer photographer, you haven't been around a while. Uh, this is a company called Life Pixel. They're at lifepixel.com. And they do infrared conversions to cameras. So, how does this work? Well, if you have a, let's, usually this happens when you have a, you know, you buy a new camera and then you have a second camera, or maybe a third camera body that you're not really using much anymore. You might consider having it converted to shoot into the infrared spectrum. Mm-hmm. Now, the infrared spectrum uh, gives you a whole bunch of creative possibilities that you wouldn't have had otherwise. And what they do is they go in and they, um, they take your camera apart. You, you pay, you pay the money, and that's usually, it's, it's around 275 to 350 depending on what camera you have, what model. And you, um, you send it to them, and then they open it up, and they, there is a, an infrared filter that sits in front of the digital sensor. And that's because digital sensors are sensitive to infrared light, but the human eye is not. We don't see infrared light at all. So if you have the sensor picking up infrared light, it's going to skew how it reacts. So you got to have this filter in there so it doesn't see infrared either. So what they do in, at LifePixel is they remove this and they cut it right off from in front of the sensor. They take it off of there and then they replace it with a different filter that allows infrared light to pass. Now there's a number of different variations that you can get. So you pick what flavor of infrared that you want to pass to the sensor. And then this camera becomes an infrared-only camera. So it's sensitive to infrared light as well as infrared. I'm sorry, infrared as well as visible. So I'm just going to show some of the pictures here from their website. Uh, some of the things that you can uh, do with an infrared-adapted camera. You can make some very dramatic black and white shots, but you can also make some color shots that are, um, well, how shall we say they are false colors. And you might see the, the sky is a dark blue, but the foliage is, is no longer green. It's, it's either green or red uh, sometimes, depending on how you treat it in Photoshop. Hmm. Or sometimes or the sky is blue, the, the foliage is white, and the, uh, and the trees are gray. So there's a very unique special effects can be done with um, these type of images. So that's, this, it's kind of a way to, uh, if you like special effects, you know, or, or to pre-visualize a scene or to show a scene that looks different uh, and something that not just any photographer is going to be able to replicate, they're, they're going to have to uh, uh, use a modified camera to get this special effect. You can't do this in Photoshop. Uh, maybe you could, you know, but it'd take a lot of work mm-hmm. and it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't probably have quite the same uh, effect as these have. So 
this is a, a reason to do this. Now, I have, um, I have a camera that I have modified this, and it's a lot of fun. You do need Photoshop as your, uh, as your friend with this one. They do make uh, one filter that uh, you can use pretty much without using uh, Photoshop, uh, but most of them you do need to kind of, you need to swap the red and blue channels. Uh, so that the blue skies are at least blue. Otherwise, everything's kind of weird looking. So like when you do this, you just can't just readily put your camera back to what it was. No, it um, it's going to be modified, you know, until, well, you can said you could put it back to where it was, but you have to send it back to them and pay more money for them to do that. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to do this unless you're pretty sure that you want to try it. But you go to their website and look at some of these examples and uh, you can you can see if you like this or not, if you buy into this effect. Uh, you know, it's... It's pretty cool. Um, it's a special effect. It's very difficult to get. Otherwise, you can also have them multi uh, modified for ultraviolet. Uh, there's some forensic uses as well. They do a number of these different things. Uh, they have tutorials on their website on how to do this, how to use the Photoshop uh, uh, programs to get this uh, back. Anyway, so if you're thinking about doing this, you should, uh, you should go to the coolphototools.com website and uh, click on the link from our front page that takes you to LifePixel. Uh, LifePixel is one of our affiliates, and so we would make a small commission uh, while it wouldn't increase the price that you pay to have the conversion done at all. And we would appreciate that so much and keep us on the air. All right, Rhonda, you're up. Okie doke. Next one I've got is lenscoat.com. Um, if you want to camo out your camera gear. This is like if your lens is cold, you need it to put a little coat on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> For you nature photographers that want to have, instead of having your either big black lens or your stark white lens out there, and you want to camo it a little bit better so that you can blend with nature, that's what they do. So you can buy all different sizes. So these things actually go over your lenses. Kind of a neoprene rubber mm -hmm. that goes on top of your lenses. Mm -hmm. So you can take them back off. They don't actually modify the lens in any way. Um, and then you have different designs. So mm -hmm. you can blend in with whatever, whatever type terrain of terrain you're trying to. Yep. Because you don't want to stand out to the deer and the right. rabbits. And, and I thought this was. Birds. I like this one, the lens coat rain coat. Which is, I thought, a very good I thought that uh, was So you cool. not only blend in, but you protect your camera from, from the getting, rain. Yes, from getting all wet. Got the little places to put your hands this in. Is, you can get this from, from the camera retailers, but all, their website is lenscoat.com. Mm -hmm. Lenscoat, mm -hmm. L-E-N-S-C-O-A-T. Mm -hmm. How much do these things cost, you know? Actually, for they're not that expensive for these that are the raincoats, which I think is a really good idea. Uh -huh. um, one twenty nine or one twenty four ninety nine. Okay, yeah, so um, it's a little cheaper one. Standard here one here for ninety nine. Yeah. All right. I so, like how they have it so that you actually have a place to put your hands. Though there's the big thing that you usually find. So your hands stay dry as you're working the controls and you're not dripping into the... <laughs> into the camera, into the yeah. Camera. does make a well, difference. pretty well made, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you do a little weather photography. I notice they also make these that fit on tripod legs, too. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. they kind of, at least the top part of the leg, so they give you a little can, more disguise. Yeah, blend in. So maybe you're not seen as well. I thought that was pretty interesting, though. So I know you shoot weddings. I do. In fact, you just... Photographed a wedding last weekend or something like that? A couple yeah. of weeks ago, yeah. Well, this next story comes to us from petapixel.com, and they did <sighs> nice coverage of it. And this is where a, um, a, a wedding photographer captured the groom's trip to the hospital after a <laughs> rattlesnake bite. Well, you know, I mean, a rattlesnake interrupts the, uh, the pre-bridal portraits there, or the bridal yeah. portraits right after the, I think it was, was just before the wedding. Maybe it was after the wedding and before the reception. I don't. I can't remember. But anyway, so the, this is uh, the photographer is Maddie May, M A D D I E. I think it was just Last before the reception because they okay. said that everybody stood and gave him a standing ovation when he showed up for the reception. Okay. All right. Good. So this this actually can be a pretty serious deal being bitten by a rattlesnake, and you know we we're familiar with rattlesnakes mm -hmm. uh, here in the Tucson Arizona area. We have the Sonoran Desert has a lot of rattlesnakes. We do. Uh, but this was in Fort Collins, Colorado, which uh, you don't really think about as being a rattlesnake uh, 
populated area. And the place that she took this portrait was about 40 feet off the parking lot. So it's not like they were hiking through the wilderness. Hmm. So this is kind of like, really? You know, I mean, when your number's up. It could happen in Tucson. When your number's up to be bitten by a rattlesnake, you just can't do much about it. So anyway, to make a long story short, um, uh, this is, uh, we're we're looking at the, uh, some of the pictures that she took here during the, um, so this is, um, uh, it says here that a young rattlesnake jumped out onto the path and bit Johnny on the ankle while we were taking a couple of photos before the reception. I'm just going to say this is, I'm sure that they perceived that to be the case, but probably more likely Johnny accidentally stepped on the rattlesnake. They pretty much don't go after you, you know. Not normally. Uh, no, nah, they're, we don't smell that interesting. You know, they're looking for rats and mice and lizards and things. And we're not, we usually, most of us don't smell like that. Um, so probably just accidentally just backed onto it and barely stepped on it or brushed it and startled it. And so, uh, the rattlesnake uh, bit him on the ankle. Now, the good news is, uh, that there was a, um, a, a park ranger happened to be driving by and came over quickly to render assistance. Uh, and they called 911 and had the hospital come pick him up, which you would do with the rattlesnake strike anytime. Mm-hmm. That's what you want to do. Uh, the rest of the things that you hear... You know, about Don't do uh, uh, rattlesnakes and sucking venom from the wound and a tourniquet and a knife. and oh, That's all, that's all going to hurt you. That's going to cause you more damage. That's what you see in the movies. Yeah, that's silly. You just call 911 and you go straight to the hospital. Uh, if you have to run or jump to get there, that's fine. Uh, if they can come get you in an ambulance, that's better. But you want to get there within two hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, on this story, turns out that the... Uh, the rattlesnake it gave him what we call a dry strike. And that's where the rattlesnake puts his fangs in you, but doesn't inject any venom. And this happens maybe as much as 10% of the time that a rattlesnake um, you know, kind of just gives you the warning and like, eh, I'm and just going to let it go this time and you're not going to get the full venom. Usually with adult rattlesnakes, because I have heard the younger the rattlesnake is, they can't control their flow of the venom. That's a myth. Is it? That's a myth. Really? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I've always heard that small, you know, new newbies, that they tend to inject more yeah. than. No, there's an adult. no scientific evidence to, to demonstrate that. Hmm. That's according to the people that I work with at the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. Mm-hmm. The herpetology department goes, no, nah, that's that's pretty much a myth. That's not true, but everybody thinks that. Hmm. It's a real common myth that everybody uh, uh, believes, but. In reality, the young rattlesnakes are seem to be able to control their venom just as well as the older ones. But the question, maybe more to the point, is uh, what are they thinking? You know, when when a, a rattlesnake, their brain is about the size of their eye. So when they decide to give you a dry strike instead of uh, put the venom in you, does that mean they're just you know they're not that irritated? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know what what the deal is. But the thing is, when it's a dry strike, okay, you're not having the symptoms, they check your blood, you're not showing the, uh, uh, the whatever it is that they're looking for in the blood, they can tell what you've been bitten or not. Not showing that, you're good to go. Huh. Okay, so, and that, that means you don't have to have all the anti-venom, all the treatment. And while we're talking about this- Or the big hospital bill. Yeah, or the big hospital bill. Uh, and while we're talking about this, uh, just FYI, you don't need to know what kind of rattlesnake bit you. The anti-venom has all four categories uh, in it. So please don't try to catch the snake and bring it to the hospital with you. They don't want you to do that. A lot of people get bitten again by trying to oh do that. Oh my gosh. So don't do that. Anyway, but our story here has a happy ending because it was a dry strike. And the wedding photographer is like, well, you know, I'm going to have to cover this because this is... That this is part happening. of your day. <laughs> yes. And so... Right on. Maddie May, you did an awesome job with this. This will be something that they'll remember for the rest of their lives and they'll pass on to their kids. And it was a dry strike. So within, you know, just an hour or so, he was able to go back to the reception and finish up on the wedding. And no rattlesnake was harmed in the production of the wedding photos. So it was all good. Wow. All right, Rhonda, I'm on to you. You're on to me? <laughs> okay. Yes, because you're believing stuff now. I know you're... Like, I really oh, you know, I did. I really did think that was true, though. You know, young rattlesnakes only read at the third grade level. Oh, stop it! <laughs> I'm going to have to do more research. I'm going to I'm gonna I'm, have to have your desert I, museum what, card. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to dig out. Um, 
I have a friend that actually specializes in rattlesnakes, uh, Manny Rubio, oh. has written a lot of books on rattlesnakes, and I'll have to look up on his stuff. He was the first He's person. He's probably got it right. He, he um, wouldn't tell you wrong on that, do you think? Um, I don't. That, that said, he's written a lot, a lot of books on rattlesnakes. In but fact, have you read any of them? Yeah. In fact, one of the things I read in one of his books that fascinated me is that the uh, rattlesnakes are pit vipers. In other words, they have the pits, the sensing pits in it's front. It's the pits when you get bitten. Yeah. The pits in front oh, of their yes. face. Yes, the L'Oreal but pits. The thing that I found fascinating is that they see infrared. Yes. Through the pits. Yes. They actually, just like what the Terminator movies are, so in the dead of night when you're walking past that rattlesnake, he still sees you with those heat sensors. Yes. That's amazing. Now, they see at a different wavelength than the life pixel modifies your camera to see. Uh Uh-huh. So because you have your camera modified to see into the infrared spectrum, it's not the part of the infrared spectrum that rattlesnakes use. Right. So you can't do the predator stuff. No. You, You can't see... Heat signatures at night, that's, that gets more into the, uh, the lo- I think it's the longer end of, of infrared, which is thermal radiation. And that, your camera won't do that. But now a rattlesnake they, Now, is. they do make cameras that do that. The forward-looking infrared radiometer cameras are the FLIR cameras, which do simulate, you know, rattlesnake vision. We think. I mean, we don't know yeah. what rattlesnakes see exactly. We've done tests. We know that they use those heat sensors uh, in their, the pits in their cheeks. Uh, that does let them see heat in total darkness. Where we Which amazes me that it actually is connected to their eyes. Well, it's I connected mean, to their brain. You know, they, uh, it's not really directly connected to their, to their eye. It goes to the brain. But they probably perceive it as a, a supplement to the vision. We're mm-hmm. guessing, right? We don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, true. Yeah. So, But yeah, cool stuff. So if you want to talk about rattlesnakes with us, um, this is uh, cool <laughs> rattlesnake tools. <Yeah. laughs> Now we, you know, we talk about rattlesnakes because of the Desert Museum we work at, yeah, and because it's Tuscan and, and Arizona, Tucson. And the Sonoran Desert. We have a lot of rattlesnakes. We do, yeah, and so and they're they're really fascinating critters. They're and I was, you know, when I first moved to Tucson, I'm like I don't think I like rattlesnakes. So who would? But now I'm like they're pretty darn cool. These are amazing little animals. And they're not interested in harming humans. That's not their goal. No. They're just trying to survive, keep their house in order. You know, so. Anyways. Just like most of the things that are out in our desert. Pretty much. All right, Rhonda. Okay. So you're talking about that I do weddings. So when you do weddings, a lot of times you do imagery for your weddings, and it's nice to have a nice presentation. I found this heirloom binary that that does great presentation boxes. I mean, it's hard to find nice boxes to put your images in. That's true. You want and, something classy, and it yes, says, you know, and, this is a classy wedding photographer yeah. that shot my wedding. And they have some really, really nice looking boxes and presentation for your imagery. You may want to do it just to have your own pictures that you want to put on your coffee table that someone could look at and have something that looks very nice and classy. But this kind of gives you an idea of some of the stuff that they kind do. Of, you know, I have an idea for a price point on what these might run. Mm, I did. Let me look. Doesn't matter. Just pass it on to the client. Well, kind of, huh? Let me see if I've got, because I'm not sure if I actually, I think you almost have to sign up with them to get their pricing. Hold on. Okay. Back. Well, that's all right. We, so, we okay. can just, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Yeah. That is uh, Heirloom Bindery. heirloombindery.com. Bindery. H-E-I-R. Yeah, like cetera, heirloom. Except, yep. Except it's H as well. I guess it depends on. What part of the desert you're from? That's true. Are you going to pronounce that or not? That's true. Let's look. I'm going to look at their shop and see what I can okay. find. Okay. Well, Rhonda's doing that. Well, I'm going Rhonda's to jump ahead looking. here, and I'm going to tell you about a new Photoshop plugin. Well, new to me. Uh, this is um, here. This is one called Aquarella Watercolor. So this takes a. Uh, it simulates the uh, taking your photo and making it into a watercolor uh, type of uh, effect. And this is available for both Mac and Windows. And Price is Right, nineteen ninety nine. Hmm. And these guys make some other interesting plugins, but I think this one looked the most fun to me. It looked like the it looked as the most realistic, you know. Sometimes you want to make a watercolor type um, effect. This would be a nice way to do it. And this comes from jixipix.com. That's J I X I P I X dot com. Aquarella watercolor. All right, are you ready yet, one? No, Rhonda? I didn't find it, so. Rhonda, are you ready yet? 
<laughs> Just wash my tongue and can't do a thing with it. I didn't find it. But, oh, well, so we're moving on to, to sign the next. Up. Okay, that's all right. Let's move ahead. So Pro Photo B2 uh, the 250 Pro Photo B2. Pro Air TTL is... to go kit. The Pro Photo B2 Air TTL. So this to, is a this is a kit. studio flash. It kind is. Of thing. So well, it looks like you could use it outside. It is. It's meant to be portable so that you can go outside and carry it around with you in a pack. Um, not cheap, not cheap. But uh, it looks About, like it's it's pretty good, and it's just a shade under two thousand yeah. bucks for the, the starter yeah. system here. Yeah, which is the 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 flash head, the uh, battery charger, the carry bag, and the uh, power pack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but TTL so through mm -hmm. the lens, through uh, the lens. metering. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you could spend two thousand bucks on a flash unit, you probably could shoot manual too. I'm just saying. Mm, probably true. Yeah. Probably true. Which, if you know, there's also now. This reminds me of uh, of the one that I just got, mm -hmm. which was the Godox uh, AD six hundred AD six hundred. I'll put that in the show notes also. Uh, the TTL version is about seven hundred and fifty bucks, and you know, while I'm sure they're not exactly the same quality as the Pro Photo, mm -hmm. um, you could have three of them for about the same price. Uh, just depends on your use, you know. I'm. It makes me wonder because uh, I'd, I'd like to know how weighty this is. Well, because, yeah, because they actually show that it probably shows that you this somewhere. Could, right? This head can be mounted to the top of the camera. Okay, the head so. does look very little, mm -hmm. you know? but then why would you want to do that? That would be nasty. Well, I'll agree. You know, because that's that's putting defeating that, your purpose. Putting right against the camera lens like that—that's where you get that very flat, right. uh, unimaginative lighting. So you wouldn't really want to do that, even though you could. But it's small, so you can mm -hmm. maybe put it on a little extension arm, mm -hmm. uh, something like that would be nice. Yeah, I'm, you know me, I'm always fascinated with different lighting stuff. <laughs> you can, I like, and I'm this like, does I'm, also I'm, high speed sync, yes, and it, it does all that good stuff too. And this is, you can get, and they give it a, you know, it gets a five star. People oh, yeah, like it. This is, yeah, these are, these were kind of a, when these first came out, mm -hmm. you know, these were definitely the, the industry leader in, in those. And still, Pro Photos, uh, very revered professional gear. Nothing wrong with their stuff at all. And you can get this, we're looking at it on andorama.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, which carries it, but you can get it some other places too. All right, moving right along. All right. Footloose and fancy free. Photoshop CC mm -hmm. from Adobe. And this, I'm looking at this on the petapixel.com website. Um, they're talking about the Photoshop. This has been a few weeks ago now. Uh, Photoshop updated their uh, latest version of if you subscribe online. They have a face aware liquify and the content-aware crop, and a few other things. But they, this has been getting the big attention, this face-aware liquify. And so what this does is you, you know, it lets you make the eyes a little bigger, make, lets you make the nose a little smaller. You can put a little smile on the mouth. You can kind of uh, move the face around a little bit. I uh, guess there's a big demand for that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it does a nice job of that. Um, content-aware crop. You know, sometimes you may have to rotate an image and it leaves by rotating it, you've left little white corners like that. And if there's not anything too complex in there, now Photoshop can automatically fix those for you. Can go ahead and uh, fill in those little white spaces. Uh, they could do this on the panoramas even quite a while ago, but it's now it's just doing it uh, across the board. And so that's that's a welcome addition. Good, you know, good on you on that. Um, you know, would it be worth? Spending another two hundred bucks to upgrade to the latest version of Photoshop, probably not. That's how that's coming. That's why they're now in a subscription model, which Rhonda is uh, still fighting to the yeah, nail. Yeah, yeah, under duress, Rhonda's yes. like, they'll not get a dime of my money. <laughs> oh no, they've gotten plenty of dimes of my money, but not another one. Not another not, one. Not I, a new one. No. All right. No. What's next? Um, I was looking that SanDisk has made an extreme micro. Do you think their disks really made out of sand? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's um, just an interesting name. It is SanDisk. Or maybe it's like Sans Disk, like sans. it's like without a disk. Maybe you know, like Sans Sans Cafe. Uh huh. All right. Anyway, so they've <laughs> they've made a two hundred and fifty six gigabyte micro SD card that will be high performance. They'll be able to go into drones, action cameras, uh, 
and 4K capable smartphones. I so like in that. other words, that they're saying that it can tout 24 hours of full HD video storage. Okay, so this would be like a surveillance type of thing because, you know. Well, that or like if you like to set up your GoPro in the backyard and. And you surveil. Know, surveil. <laughs> well, for 24 hours. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure you don't have to use it all at once. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, that's how much, how many, what did you say that was? Two size? 256 gigabytes. Yikes. And how much is that going to cost me? Uh, they haven't got prices out on it yet, but okay. probably I'm thinking about, because Samsung did recently put out a 256 card also. Yeah. It's not going to, it, they don't tout the speed that the SanDisk does, because the SanDisk says that it, it's going to be a lot faster, but they're about 249 so. No, it's probably going to be in that same place. Yeah, point. someplace in there. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I want to put everything on one card, or if I want a bunch of multiple cards. <sighs> what would be more convenient? Just to well, know. I, hmm. I'm always the person, although they, they also have a 10-year guarantee that the card won't fail, which I thought that was interesting. That's nice. Uh-huh. Of course, if we're shooting 4K video now, we're probably going to need those kind of mm -hmm. big sizes like that. So they must be pretty proud that they're going to put a 10-year guarantee on it. So we could it do fail. we could do the cool Photo Tools uh, YouTube version. We could do it in 4K, mm -hmm. and then you could look at us really in detail. Why well, can't think why you want to do this. that? Why no. don't you? No, I'm probably pushing no. it, doing it in 720. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should reduce it to 640 <laughs> by 480. Probably just stick with the audio version, folks. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to see here. Move don't, along. Don't look. <laughs> don't look. Yeah. Okay, so if, since I did that one, I might as well go to the next, is that um, Lexar has a new USB 3 card reader that they're touting speed. Because I don't know if, how you are. It, it is kind of a pain in the rear when you bring in your card your SD card and you go to download your pictures into the computer and it's kind of like, okay, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? Yeah. Well, USB 3 is, is way faster than, mm -hmm. you know, than yeah. USB 2 used to be. So I'm, I'm getting pretty happy with that. But yeah, if you did a ton of images, you know, like if you're doing a weekend's worth of weddings or something, it could save you a few minutes. Yeah. It says it, it quickly offloads the raw and 4K video. Yeah, there's that 4K videos, mm -hmm. that, that thing again. Again. It's pretty wacky. Yep. So I thought that's not bad. And let me now take, hold on, let me look and see. I'll tell you what the price is on that because I had it here. Uh, 25 bucks, twenty four ninety five. Okay. Well, so that's, that's, that's doable. Certainly right in the ballpark. Yep. So they think that theirs is faster than everybody else's USB yep, 3.0 reader. That's what they're touting, that this thing is going to be much okay. faster. Well, maybe somebody will do a shootout and we'll have to. To really see, put the money where the mouth is, so mm -hmm. to speak, on that. I don't know. All right. Well, coming up uh, on my side of the computer over here mm -hmm. is a new backdrop material. You know, for studios type stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a did studio they get backdrop. It? Did backdrop. they get it from the queen? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just, she just plain old green screen oh, okay. on the queen. You know, she was like, could you make me a costume of green screen? <laughs> Fabric, please. Like a sweet gun. Yes. So anyway, uh, this is this is on the Popular Photography website. I've got a bunch of stuff from them this week. Uh, popphoto.com. And it's not really, um, this isn't their product. This is from a, a Backdrop Express. And I'm going to make this video a little bigger so you can see it here. But now see, what we're, this is a, is a backdrop that's, it's got sequins on it. Little shiny sequins. Yeah. And it's got black on one side and gold or silver on the other. Oh, that's so pretty cool. So as you, you run your hand it. across it, you can change the pattern or design in it. That run is your hand very across, cool. yeah. So they, you can get a whole backdrop of this, and you could you could make you know kind of various shapes or lettering or or whatnot just by rubbing your hand across. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. We'll put a link to that in the show notes in case you want to get a backdrop of all that kind of good stuff. There's, they make some variations on that. There's, you know, some different color combinations of it. Well, you could write like little words behind you. You could write, you could write words on your backdrop. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. Well, you could like you know. celebration. Yeah, yeah or joy, joy. Or love. love. <laughs> make a big heart. Yes, a make heart. a big heart. Meerkat. 
<laughs> a carrot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm waiting for you. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm here. Hello. Hello. So this is the Wonder Panna Free Arc XL for, and this, it comes for other cameras, but this is for the Canon 1124F lens. So what it is. I was hoping you are going to tell yeah, me because that didn't is, tell me anything. I know. It's a rotating filter holder for an ultra wide lens. So, if you... So, how big of a filter will it hold? Oh, it will hold a big one. Look look at the size of this. Because you know how how you have your ultra-wide lenses anyway. And it, they're so wide that you end up... Um, yeah, it says, okay, it's got a 77 millimeter filter ring on it. Mm -hmm. But if you put a polarizer on it, it's going to vignette. It's going to make the corners darker. So, well, you're like, well, why did you put that on there then? Hopefully that it doesn't so much on this one. You can For, get thin ring polarizers from uh -huh. like Singray, you know, that are very thin. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can get one of these and then order a giant filter. Giant filter. Which is like a, probably 105 or 110, 111 millimeter or something like that. And that's what this is about, is being able to put that giant filter so, okay, on so that on, lens. In this particular lens, this is made specifically for the Canon right. 11 to 24. Really a wide angle lens. And you can see, here's, here's the lens. You can see how. Okay, so then you put the filter holder. Oh, this could hold square filters. Uh -huh. if it's, square, it's a square filter holder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is without the filter. It's 229 bucks. Mm -hmm. What size filters does it take? Let's see. You have to buy some square ones. Yes. Big square Which ones could be could be problematic. Well, this it, is it would be expensive because if anyone has looked at filters, filters are expensive anyway. And we're talking these are going to be big filters. This is from photodiox.com. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Link to that in the show notes at coolphototools.com. Click on the podcast button, and then that will take you right to the most current podcast and the. Ones right below it are the previous weeks, if you haven't listened to them yet. I was looking All to right. say some of the other filters, but anyway. I got, but, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one other thing here. We actually, you know, we're running over time, but let's just, Already? Let's just get this stuff in here. Cause, no way. Because I don't want to wait till next week to talk about it. All right. So um, let's see. Here's, a, here's an article from Petapixel. We'll go through these kind of quick. Um, and this is uh, an article about uh, beauty portraits that show how Hollywood beauty has changed hmm. since 1920. And uh, I'll link to this so you can take a look. It's kind of an interesting read, but I think essentially to me, like, you know, like, like if you were beautiful in 1920, you'll still be beautiful today. You know, there's like the, the standards have not really changed. Beauty is pretty much about symmetry. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, one side of your face is the same size as the other size, then you can fall into that beauty category. All right, you got anything else or you want me to just keep going real fast here? <laughs> I don't care, go ahead. Okay, so the next one coming up here real quick, this is from photojojo.com and these are camera straps made from seat belts. No right? way. Yeah, the and people that, that don't wear seat belts have donated these to make camera straps out of. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Don't write me. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, seat belts, you know, I'm sure they had these made specially as camera straps because we all do wear our seat belts in our cars. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, we do. Yes. Uh, so this is not a new idea. You know, I've got a guitar strap that's made from a seat belt. Really? Yeah, that's probably 20 years old. Uh, and it has the buckle on it, which is kind of cool. You know, you can strap your guitar on you. And it snaps on there. Where anyway, so this these don't have the buckle. This is so you know these these need to go back for the buckle. But other than that, I'm no, okay you with don't, it. You don't want a buckle. You don't want it where you could accidentally undo it and have your camera go flying off. Well, yes, but you know you'd have to push that button. But that, I know. I'm just saying. Right? Yeah. Somebody would push the button. There goes the camera. All right. So these are from Photo Jojo. They're about twenty bucks. Come in some different colors. These look like fun. All right. Uh, I think that's about all I have. Rhonda, do you have uh, um, anything else you want to take us out on? Yes, if it'll ever display. Hold on, it's thinking. This is a new lens, baby. It's the Twist 60. I like how it looks. Pretty sure we talked about these no, in a previous we didn't talk episode, about this didn't one. we? Are no, you sure? No, I don't think so. I don't think we talked about this one, did okay, I? Okay, maybe it was just on the blog, but I've seen that this isn't that. Well, this has been out for a couple months. I know, but I like but how it looks. Are you going to get one? No. Well, it's actually, it's, it's not badly priced. No, it's not. For, you know, for some of these things. Mm -hmm. All right. So go ahead and tell us. Um, 
I, I just, I like how it looks. It has a little bit different look of it than, I, the thing I don't like about the Lens Babies is they do the one thing I'm always trying to do. I'm always trying to keep my subject in focus, and I think most of the Lens Babies are to make your subject out of focus, and I have problems with that. But this one actually looks, I like how it handles light. See how, I, like the light flares that you're seeing? They're coming out through these pictures. Okay, so what what is the thought on this lens? The, the Twist 60. Yes. Which... Um, Freeze your subjects from the background on the frame with a delicious, twisty, swirly blur. Okay, so, so. this is kind of one of those uh, uh, modeled on the uh, the old style lenses that they used to use on view cameras that were very simple. They only had just a couple lens elements. Mm -hmm. And so this is... Uh, um, it gives you a very shallow depth of field, and the autofocus areas take on kind of a unique, um, what they call a swirling bokeh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's and they're about two hundred and eighty bucks. Yeah, two seventy nine. Okay, and they'll fit various cameras depending fit on various the, cameras. And these, of course, are manual focus only. Right. You must manual focus. But I, thought, right. I liked how it looked. I like how they they put the yeah, gold well, in I, on it. Okay, you like the you know, physical construction. I like the physical construction. As, yeah, it, the heck but with how I the pictures look coming That's out. That's right. It. It's actually, all about how it looks. The samples that they show look pretty darn yeah, good. Yeah, they did. Actually, yeah, That's so. why I said I, I when I looked at the imagery, I thought that looks pretty interesting. I liked how it handled the light. All right. Well, you know what time it is. Okay. It's but, time to say see you all adios. next time. Adios Goodbye. Till next week. Till next week. Yeah. See and ya. We'll have more of the same. Keep on shooting. Hey, remember, write us. Let us know what you think. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Cool Photo Tools podcast. Sign up for our mailing list at coolphototools.com. Got a question? Send an email or MP3 audio file to info at coolphototools.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.